Hi and welcome back here to episode 27, part 2. Uh, we'll be installing uh, our license plate uh, light and bracket. If you remember in part 1, we uh, got our holes drilled. One, two, three, four. And then that hole there is for my wiring. So we're going to plumb into the police OEM accessory light, which is only a, um, a, a marker light or clearance light. If you remember up here, uh, this is the OEM hole where the harness went through, the main harness went through on the right side. I made a hole over here, which I'm going to pass this harness through and then uh, I'm going to put the OEM bracket that goes underneath these two holes, that hole and that hole, to hold the harness up and run it back to my tail light. So what I'm gonna do here now is I'm gonna remove, remove the saddlebags, remove the saddlebags and undo the lower shock bolt so I can use my center stand and lift the bike up and the swing arm will stay on the, the swing and the tire will stay on the, the lift and I'll be lifting the bike up and then I'll be able to get my hand underneath the fender. So I'm not going to view uh, me removing the saddlebags or, or undoing the bottom shocks. Uh, you guys saw me put the saddlebags on and you guys saw me install the shocks. So yes, I did put Loctite on the shock bolts, um, but what I'll be doing here now is I'll be pulling them out. I'll wire wheel them, clean them up, and then I'll put more Loctite on it when I go to reinstall them. But like I said, mocking up, uh, putting up together a bike and taking one apart, putting it on, taking it apart, takes a lot of time. And uh, sometimes you may take the same part off about five, six times. So I'm going to get at that now and uh, we'll be right back with you. Okay, so we're back here. We got the saddlebags off. We've got both rear shock bolts um, loosened. So that's giving me some clearance. I can get my hand up in underneath here now to, to do some work. You can see my finger can come through now. So I'm gonna be able to get my hand up in there. So in the back, what we're gonna do is, I'm going to mount the license plate bracket and light and that wiring. I'm gonna leave the wiring all intact and I'm going to pull it all the way up and through the little hole we made up here and then I'll do my soldering up here, and then I'll pull it back and I'll tie it up in here with this uh, harness, and this harness will come back, go you know, pretty far. I'm going to uh, probably drill two holes in the side of the fender from underneath that you, you won't be able to see, so I can hold the harness tight there as well. Um, I could shorten this, but this is an OEM harness, um, which I don't mind shortening, but if I ever go back to the original fender or I sell it to someone or someone wants a different vision, uh, I'm, I'll, I'll leave it like that. So it's easier just to put some accessories in like this so it can be removed. So now I'm going to grab my uh, license. I'm just going to turn this this way here so you guys can see so I can work. So we can see my four holes, one here, one ear, one ear, one ear, and there's the wire. So, I have my license plate, I taped it off. I have uh, my license plate frame and light. I just have some foam to not do any damage to, uh, to the actual fender. I'll trim the foam off afterwards. I, I find it's a good, uh, good thing to use. So what I'm doing is I'm just starting my screws through the, the license plate bracket, through the license plate. I can move you over this way and kind of see what I'm doing over here. So I'm just grabbing screws and going through. Again, you got to curve the license plate a little bit be able to fit the curved license plate bracket. You have to put different holes in your license plate. I've had this license plate since I've been 16. It's been on sport bikes, 
Harleys, um, I don't know, a whole lot of different bikes. Uh, so it's been beat up pretty good. Now I'll just put the foam behind. With the foam, I'll probably have some foam sticking out both sides. I'm okay with that because I will uh, trim it once I get it mounted on to the, the bike. This is just packing foam. It won't take up too much uh, room on uh, in the mounting part process of it, so I'm uh, okay with it. Now we'll come back over to the bike. Again, I understand it's tough to, to see what I'm doing all the time, especially without a camera person, but it is what it is. So now I'm gonna pass these two wires through the hole I made for the wires. These are so thin. I understand with the LEDs they don't draw as much, but to work with it's kind of a hassle, to tell you the truth. They're just so uh, so fine. So I'm just pulling them through first. Just lining up all the the holes here. I'm gonna put some nuts underneath those four. So it comes with a washer and a nut per. Uh, Per bolt here for the license plate bracket. Like I say, removing the the lower shock bolts gives you some more clearance between the fender and, um, and the tire, which definitely helps. It's uh, what you need. Again, just getting these stuck down. I got one one bolt here that I got to get uh, aligned, but uh, as I compress the frame, it uh, it bows. So I think if I just can hold three of them in place, and then I'll uh, be able to work on getting that one in. on getting this one in. I like it fairly snug, not too snug, but snug enough that uh, it's not going to fall back out. going to run it in here with a ratchet and a driver. It's coming through the back side now. I will grab my last washer and nut. Again, the washer is just a regular everyday washer. You know, nothing exciting, but the nut is a plastic thread locker because you get some vibration through the back and through the fender. So it doesn't hurt to make sure that uh, they're not going to come out on you while you're riding. I drop the nut. I'm going to 
run it in a little bit more here. Not a whole lot of room for the washer and nut together. So we'll just run it in a little bit more. Because the fender's also on a curve and so is the license plate bracket. So we're putting flat round washers on a curved, uh, on a curved piece of ABS. There we go. Now I will tighten each one down and hold the nut on the back. Again, I want the bolt to be protruding through the lock nut. Again, this is a plastic frame, so we don't want to over tighten it and break it. Kind of go in a crisscross pattern. Again, some people like to use electric, uh, um, excuse me, electric uh, impacts or air, air ratchet. Use whatever you feel comfortable. I say it's just a plastic frame into an ABS fender, so I just uh, run it down as evenly as I can, and then obviously uh, without breaking the, the frame. What I'm doing here now because I this one I thread it in so it's bottomed out in the bracket I'm just tightening up the nut now from the bottom because I could feel the washer still loose so just tightening up the nut in the bottom that feels good And then this last one up here, top right. There we go. This license plate's seen better days with quite that much. Might be time to, to get a new one soon. Because it's so cold out, the the 3D tape, 3D tape, geez, the 3M tape that I got my license plate light on, it's not sticking too good. Now this heater's putting out a lot of heat, but I think it's when I go in, I shut the heater off, and the temperature just isn't there anymore to keep the adhesive held on. So I don't have any foam there. Got a little bit of foam in the top and some down the side here. I'm going to get a little razor extra foam off here. I don't want to, like I said, I don't mind painting things, but I don't want to get into the bodywork aspect, so I'm just going to score it so I don't want to leave any marks on uh, the fender itself. I'm using my nail, I don't have much, but it's actually working better, just my fingernail. You can see that uh, foam fly off there, that's how much uh, pressure the heater's blowing out. So 
So just using my nails coming off pretty good. And I'm happy with that. Clean it up a little better later on, but the license plate frame is on there. Got my wires coming down the bottom. I want them to come out the top. So I'll work on that, but I want to put some tape few spots. They're both ran as individual wires. That's fine. I kind of want to just put some tape every like three inches just to make it like a harness. So they don't just fly apart like that and uh, run individually. So I'll get some electrical tape here. So I'll back it up here a bit. All I'm doing is going to tape these wires together. So they're two individual wires, white and black. I just want them to be the same length, easier for me to pull through. Some people may not do this. I, I like to, because uh, I'm passing them up through underneath the fender, and like I say, the tire's there. So I don't want to damage the wires um, by rubbing on the tire or getting hung up on anything. So I go about every two, three inches. My tape is pretty cold as well from being in the shop here. As I say, it's, it's pretty cold. That's the first time today the heater shut off, so it's caught up to whatever I got the thermostat on for that, for today. So all I'm doing, you can see, I'm just putting tape every so often, just so they, they, they'll stay together and when I pull them, they're gonna be the same length and not get hung up on anything. So there's no, no rhyme or reason. Some people run this through looms and stuff. Um, I don't want to make the wire any thicker than it is. Like the tape will bump it up, you know, a size. But besides that, I don't want to run a loom or nothing. Once I get it inside the bracket that we put in there underneath the fender, um, I, I what I like to do is just take a thin piece of duct tape, yep, duct tape, and then stick it to the bottom of the fender and put the wires underneath the duct tape. Reason why I like the duct tape is because this fender is brand new and the duct tape's about two inches wide and uh, it'll stick really nice and it'll hold to, you know, the weather, uh, you know, as much as I need it to. And I just, uh, it's a cheap way. Harley does make like a sleeve that's got two side tape and, and then you can just pass it through the sleeve and that's what's on the OEM one. But if I can save some money just by using duct tape, yeah, I can't pass any more wires through it because it's not a sleeve. But at the end of the day, once I get this in, the only time I'll be taking it off is if I'm if I'm changing it. So I'm going to peel a piece of tape off here, kind of get up underneath the best I can for this last one. Tough to work like this, but it happens. It happens. So there we go. I must have the thermostat set pretty low today because I'll tell you, she's pretty cold in here. Okay, so now, because I've got it taped every so often, again, I'll still open and bulge, but now my two wires are right here. I'm going to now try and sneak my hand up to my other hand in the side which is right here. Now I switch hands again and try and get it up into the hole that I drilled out. Sometimes you can use needle nose pliers 
to grab it. I can feel it with my finger here. There we go. Got it. So now I just pass it up and out. There we go. So nothing too fancy. Uh, that's all that's all we need to do. So now we've got our light wired right here. Again, my 3M tape's not sticking the best. I'm gonna push it up again. I was thinking about putting painter's tape on it to help it stick overnight. You know what I should have done? I should have probably just taken it in the house where it's warm all the time, but when it does get warmer, I can always use a heat gun or a air, uh, excuse me, hair dryer and uh, warm it up again. So I'm gonna bring you over to this side here. Let's see if I can get this a little bit higher. There we go. So here's the wires here from our uh, our tail light. Here is the police accessory wire here with the OEM plug. I removed the OEM plug harness here. So I got the OEM plug. It will go right in to there. And so it can, excuse me, so it can be unplugged. But what I'm gonna do here, cause I only need one of these. I'm gonna cut this one off and shrink wrap it so there's no power gonna come out of it. And then I'm gonna cut this one off and then I'll be soldering these onto there. So uh, these are real thin compared to here. What I did get, but I'm not sure, I think the solder is going to work better. I got the shrink wrap, or excuse me, shrink tube. Um, they're like a union um, and they're a reducer all at one. So the one end is for this thin a wire. The other end is for this thin a wire. I'm just worried that when I put it in, and then I put shrink tube over top of this, it's gonna be like that thick when I'm done. Even if I offset them, this is pretty thick. See how thin that is compared to that? I don't wanna take up more room than I need to. So uh, I'm gonna get this harness cut up and then uh, I'll come back and show you how I got it there. Okay, so the first step I did was in the police harness that went to the back, we had a secondary uh, for another uh, clearance marker light. Actually, these were for the, the flashing siren lights. I cut it out and then I shrink tubed it with uh, some shrink tube. And then uh, I just taped it up to the other one. So we removed that. Just for test sakes, I took our wire from the license plate light and I've just bent them into the positive and negative prong of the police light uh, harness. because so I just want to make sure that it's gonna work before I solder. So we should be able to see, I'm gonna turn the lights on. Like I say right now, you can see right in this corner is where this 3M tape isn't sticking. And that doesn't surprise me because how cold it is. But nonetheless, I'm gonna turn the light on and we should see it light up. So we can see the license plate light up. I should be able to hit the brake and it doesn't change. I can put a blinker on, it doesn't change. Put the other blinker on, it doesn't change. So that is strictly a marker light or a clearance light or a running light, a lot of different names for it. So now I'm gonna come back up here and I'm gonna clean this up now. Um, I'll get it uh, ready to solder and then we'll go from there. Okay. So I'll just bring you back here to show you what I've done. So this is the police tour pack accessory plug that we're using because it's an OEM. It had these two pigtails attached to it. And they were going to the two marker lights that were by the license plate. So I cut the first one off, then I shrink wrapped 
were shrink tubed, uh, both ends, so the power wouldn't touch anything. Then I cut the second one off to hook into our license plate light wires. Again, they're very thin. So those are aluminum wires. So I soldered them, but what I did was I twisted the OEM harness around the aluminum one, and then I straightened it and I soldered it because the aluminum's now based in the center of, uh, of the copper of the uh, OEM lights. So now I'm just going to take our original police harness here and I'm gonna plug it in. And now I'm gonna run them both underneath the fender. And then I will use our nice uh, C-clip there that goes up underneath the seat. Um, I'm just trying to figure out, should I tie it like, like this? When I get underneath there, I'm trying to figure that out now. So once I uh, get an idea, I gotta shove it through the hole, make sure it will fit through our C-clip and go back and forth. So I'm giving you the idea of how I'm running it. Uh, you may not see everything because I got to undo some of these tie wraps, put new tie wraps on because I can't have it too bulky because it has to fit in this C groove here. And then when I tighten it down, this washer holds the harnessing. So I'm just trying to uh, figure out um, how, how my game plan is going to go here. So we'll be back. So here we are, I've uh, run it through the slot we made over here, right here in the fender. I've got to get two side tape, you've heard me say that numerous times, and I'll put it where the backrest, excuse me, for the backrest where uh, the driver's rest goes. I've got the shock still loosened right now, but I've got the bike lowered further down to make sure that uh, there's my light on. So what I did was the harness was coming out of my license plate bracket, I drilled a hole, two holes right here, just above my actual strut bar. So I took my strut cover and my reservoir for my shocks off because my tour pack bracket right there will actually hide and cover this tie wrap. And then obviously the C clamp that was underneath uh, these uh, this bracket here that was the OEM one, which was the other way because the OEM harness went through the left side. I have it holding it in. So I've got a tie wrap here holding it against the fender. I have my jack lowered down further. You can see that's where my shock usually goes. I have it lowered even more. And I put my hand up in there. My tire is well away from the harness. So I'm happy with that. So I'm going to tighten up my strut bar or my strut cover again. I'm going to put my tour pack bracket back on, put my Olin's um, reservoir back on, and then I'll put the shocks back on, the saddlebags back on, and the rear is done now. So I got my lights down here for my blinkers, running lights, and brake lights. And then I got my license plate light all wired in using an OEM pigtail, which that makes me feel good about. So uh, until next time, uh, we will be back on the bagger or the FXR. But uh, again, you know, uh, can't show everything without a camera person here. So I got to take stuff off, put stuff on, take stuff off. So now I'm just going to um, mount my shocks back in with Loctite, mount my um, strut bar chrome cover back on, then mount uh, my Olin's reservoir accumulators back on. And, uh, and then my tour, back, tour pack bracket, put the saddlebags on, and then we'll be back where we were. So the rear is done except for setting up the, the shocks here. Um, I will do that in another video, uh, but that'll be it for today. Thanks a lot.